The views, opinions and information shared during the KCU Services podcast series belong solely to the individuals involved. Any recommendations or advice given during the podcast are general in nature and does not replace the need to seek professional advice when necessary. If you are in need of urgent assistance, please call 000 or the Kids Helpline on 1800 551 800. The City of Casey proudly acknowledges the traditional owners, Casey's Aboriginal communities and their rich culture and pays respect to their elders past, present and future. We acknowledge Aboriginal people as Australia's first people and as the traditional owners and custodians of the land on which we work and live. This podcast has been recorded on Bunurong land. Hi everyone and welcome to Season 5, Episode 3 of the KC Youth Services Podcast. We're your hosts, my name's Tessa. And I'm Stephen. We are some of the friendly youth workers you will find at our youth information centres here at the City of KC. This is the second of our series of chatting with professional sporting teams that have a connection to the City of KC. We're excited to have a couple of footballers from the Melbourne City Football Club. Welcome Holly McNamara and Andrew Naboo. Thanks Thank you. for having us. Thanks for having us. All right, so we open with an icebreaker and the one today is, what is your spiritual animal and why? Oh, that's a quite a tough question, but uh, I'm thinking something something fast. I'm, I'm quite speedy when I am playing, so I think... I think I'll have to go like a honey badger or something like that. Something something left field, but something fast and a bit speedy. And really tough. Honey badgers are really tough. Well, I'd hope so. Sometimes, sometimes. Andrew. Okay, so my spirit animal will probably be like a Tasmanian devil, cartoon version. Um, someone with le- a very little finesse and just runs around smashing things and smashing people. That sounds a bit like me. I'm a big fan, so absolutely. Tessa, what about you? My spirit animal, according to Stephen, and I agree because I think they're really cute, is a meerkat. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm probably a little bit tall to be a meerkat. But, you know, I can dream. It just means you can see further, which is cool. Uh, well, for me, it literally would break the ice, and it's a polar bear. They're very chill. They do things in their own time, and there's, there's no real pressure. They just do what they want, when they want. I love that idea. Cool. So next question we have, uh, do you have any mentors that have helped guide you to where you are? And what are some of the things that they've done to help you become the person you are today? For me, I've had plenty of mentors, both on and off the field. So it's probably a long list to mention all of them, but probably the most important would be my dad. Just the sort of sacrifice he made to help me get to where I am, you know, skipping work, taking off work to take me to games and trainings and, you know, just paying for everything and making sure that I had everything I needed to succeed and just sort of his background you know fleeing the war in Lebanon to come here and give a better opportunity for his family I guess is all the motivation and inspiration that I need so yeah he's probably my biggest mentor. It's it's wonderful that you can acknowledge that too parental help is is always important in in the development for sport um, but in life too so yeah definitely. Holly what about you? Um, for me, it's quite similar to Andy. I've had a lot of mentors throughout my career so far and there's been a lot of mentors that have been in my life for a short period of time, but they've had a really big impact. Um, a big one for me is coaches. I've had a lot of coaches, probably a new coach almost every year, but they've had a big impact on me. Even smaller than that, it's, it's my teammates. Teammates can be a mentor as well, like on the pitch, off the pitch all the time. But yeah, like similarly to Andy, it's it's my family, um, my parents doing all the work that Andy said before, taking me to training, sitting there in the cold for hours, waiting for me. It, it really it really impacts you kind of as you grow older and you and you kind of think how much they've done for you. Yeah, I think age, you get that wisdom and think it's a lot it's a lot of work they put in and help you along the way. So it's really cool. All right. Um, can you think of a time that you questioned yourself or ability? And if so, how did you manage to overcome potential adversity? Um, for me, there's been quite a bit of adversity in my career. I've, I've been injured quite a lot. Um, and that's kind of, when you get injured, you kind of get in your own head and, and you think you're not good enough. Why am I even bothering playing when I'm in rehab all the time? So So that's a big, big thing for me. It's just... It's just finding that fun again, 
when you're in rehab, whether you're in a poor form patch in your career, anything, it's it's just finding that fun again. So even if I'm in the gym for hours a day, it's it's finding something fun in there, whether it's kicking a ball around against a wall, some, something silly, but but it might bring the spark back to your day and it just helps you come back the next day, I guess. So like fun distractions. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It can be a dark time too when you're coming back from an injury. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty similar to be honest. I've had a couple of injuries. Probably not to the extent of Holly. She's a warrior. She's battled through a lot. So, for me, I'm pretty much the same. I've faced a lot of adversity in my career. I'm a little bit older than Holly, so I've probably experienced a little bit more. But it's just a lot of rejection, a lot of injuries, which takes its toll, especially as a younger player. I've sort of developed a thick skin over the years which has sort of helped me a lot face adversity now. But with my injuries, I just, every injury that I've had, I sort of use it as a challenge to come back stronger. Obviously, like Holly said, it gets a bit lonely up in the gym sometimes when you're doing rehab and just using it as a challenge to get myself stronger and how much better can I come back from this injury is is always a good thing that I've used to, to come back from injuries. And with rejection, obviously, I just sort of accepted that everyone has their opinion of you, but the only opinion that matters is that of myself. And I just work on strengthening my strengths as much as I can. I know what I'm good at and I just work to those strengths and along the way as, as much of my weaknesses as I can improve, um, I will, but just to sort of learn to control what I can control and that's about it, really. Everyone has their opinion, so as long as I think highly of myself, that's what, that's what counts. Andy, you sound so um, secure in your position, so you know your value. And that's something I think you get, as you get older, you absolutely understand your own value more. For young people, it can be really hard to sort of see their own value, but you definitely know yours, which is fantastic. Yeah, I mean, as a young player, it's always tough. You know, you work so hard to get to the professional level, and when someone tells you you're not good enough or whatever the case may be, you you sort of take it, you know, uh, really hard because you don't know much else other than football. You know, we've dedicated our whole life to this sport and when someone tells you it's not good enough especially as a young player you sort of don't know where to go or what to do so as long as you sort of control what you can control and work as hard as you can every day then that's all that's all you can do really yeah no fantastic answers so the next question we have it's it's about pre-game do you have any pre-game routines that you must follow like wearing the same socks or the same breakfast or like in game process those sort of things yeah definitely I think a lot of the footballers would be the same when when they say they've got their pre-match routine for me it's it's keeping things the same wearing the same socks even undies bra eating the same things the night before the day of small things getting a coffee before the game um yeah really small things but they kind of all add up and then in game, it's all it's all about routine for me. So warm ups, all about doing the same things, having at least one shot that I like before I, I go back in and get changed. So so it's a lot of little things, but they all add up. And, and mentally, it, it kind of gets you there, gets you ready. So the harder you work at something, and the more routine you make it, the better you get at it. Yeah, it just it kind of lets you know that you're ready for the game. So so when you when you're prepared well. You've done all the right things. You know that the only thing left is to just go out and have fun. So you don't you don't think about all the other stuff. Yeah, for me, it's pretty similar. I don't have any superstitions or anything. I used to be like that when I was young, but it just became sort of too stressful and too much. So routine is obviously extremely important. You know, when you find a balance that works for you, um, you sort of stick to it. And for me, I don't necessarily wear the same things all the time or uh, eat the same things all the time, as long as the nutritional stuff is correct. Like, you know, I may have different breakfasts that do the same thing, that help in the same way. Um, Before the game, yeah, my routine is pretty similar every game. I sort of, like Holly said, I I like to feel as comfortable as I can going into the game in the warm-up and in training. So day before the game, I'll do a finishing session or a crossing session, normally with Jamie McLaren, just because we've sort of played together for years. We have a connection, so... Um, we sort of try and strengthen that as much as possible and you know the day of the game pretty similar routine I go for a walk in the morning um, walk my dog and then have lunch have a nap and then go to the game and it's yeah pretty similar every week um if you weren't playing sport what could you see yourselves doing to be honest not much uh I'm, I'm I've dedicated my whole life to sport if I wasn't a footballer I'd probably play golf 
because that's all I do when I'm not playing football. But also I cut most of the boys' hair here before games and stuff, so probably that, to be honest. I, I'm not sure how I'd go as a barber cutting 30, 40 people a day or however many they cut, but, yeah, I'm, I find enjoyment in it. It's sort of a bit of an escape, so probably that. Well, if you get those really uh, e- exclusive clients, <laughs> you know, you, you yeah. get charge a bit more coin for that, right? So, Holly, what about yourself? Um, I feel like as footballers we get asked this question a lot um, and it's always the hardest question I find because I don't see myself doing anything else, especially at the moment. I've also dedicated my whole whole kind of life so far to this. It's hard to imagine doing yeah. something else, but I think I'd still be around sport. I'd have some type of type of job doing something in sport, whether that's like coaching or even probably going back to uni and doing some course for a physio or something like that. Just something to be around sport, I think. That's fantastic. Um, and you, you're in the right space. You, you are where you love to be. And, yeah, it's it's interesting question to sort of think, well, what would I be doing? So, yeah. Let's not dream too big to be a barber. It's hard, though, because, like, you've literally dedicated everything to this sport. So you can't see yourself doing anything else. Like, I've been in rehab long enough. I'd probably be a rehab coach. After I finish, yeah, I know enough about the human body and rehab and stuff that I'd probably do that when I'm finished, to be honest. Just to stay around it, like Holly said, like, I can't, when I've got a day off, I just don't know what to do with myself. So it's like, I just want to be at training. I just want to be around it. So this is a bit out there, though. Um, There's obviously the recovery side of that, but there's also the support that you can help mental health wise get someone that's going through these things, how you can help them get through that. Because it can be hard to see the, the, the light through the tunnel, right? Yeah, especially for young players. Like, we've had a few young boys in rehab um, at the same time as me, so I've just tried to take them under my wing and give them all the support they need to get through it because it's tough, like, watching the boys and girls out on the field when you're in rehab in the gym and all you want to do is be out there and watching games from the grandstand, it's tough. So some young players find it really hard and that's why sort of I commend Holly because she's been through hell and back for, for her injuries and she's kept such a positive mindset through it all. So it's hard to do that, um, especially like I'm 31. I've been through a lot of injuries and still at the, at the start I find it really hard to do. It sort of circles back to being a mentor in a way too. Like, you know, we talked about how you've had mentors in your life, but what you're doing is fantastic for your teammates and for the club. Looking at Andy, he's <laughs> definitely even a mentor for me. Um Everything he's been through and every day comes into the gym with a smile on his face. So so it's a big bonus for everyone else. I can see one of the honey badger's wall wounds right there too. So Oh yeah. Yeah. It's that's an ugly one, that's for sure. Yeah, no, it's it's classy, it's cool. It's, it must be scary for opponents to see that and think, Oh, someone so tough coming towards me, I'm gonna be, have to be on my game today. I'd like to think so. <laughs> I don't know. One of my pre match routines is to actually pull my socks up above my knees so they wouldn't even see it. Pull them down, show it off, scare them. Do you have any advice for any young people looking to turn sport into a profession? Yeah, I would just touch back to what I said before about about finding the fun in it. Um, You kind of excel more and have more success, I find, when you are enjoying it and you're having fun. When when you're not and it's kind of a chore in a way, it's it's never going to become a profession. It's not not something that you're going to want to excel at and succeed, whereas... When you're having fun, you want to do the best you can. You want to you want to keep pushing and and keep striving for something more. So, so so that's that's kind of my biggest advice is just to find the fun in, in different ways, little ways if possible, but however you can. Passion first, yeah. job second. One hundred percent. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. And you know, she hit the nail on the head there. It's all about enjoyment. Um, you know, at the end of the day, professional sport does become a job. Um, for us, it's. It is our job, so sometimes when you look at it as a job, it can become a little bit stressful and uh, sort of tough mentally because you're always wanting to succeed and do the best you can to, I guess, achieve as much as you can, but at the end of the day, financially secure yourself and, and support yourself for the rest of your life. So sort of when I, throughout my career, when I've looked at it as a job, I find it a lot less enjoyable than when I look at it as sort of my escape and my passion and my excitement um so the more we can find that the easier um this job becomes and also 
you know, people don't see what we go through every day. You know, they see Saturdays and Sundays, but they don't see Monday to Friday what we grind through here. And for young kids who don't sort of see that, my advice is when you do get there eventually, you know, the easy part is making it. The hardest part is staying there. Um, you see a lot of players come into the system and sort of fall out within a few years because they think I've made it and that's it. But it only gets harder from when you make it. So I think just maintaining your discipline and commitment and work ethic through it all is the hardest part, but the most important part and definitely the most rewarding if you get it right. Fantastic response. I'm, in my mind, I'm thinking, I know you guys, obviously Melbourne City players, but you have represented Australia too. So, yeah, you could you could talk from getting to that point too, can't you? So it's Yeah, I mean, that's, for me, representing your country is the biggest honour that you can have as a footballer. Um, you know, I've been lucky enough to play 10 games for the Socceroos and, and play in the World Cup in 2018. And for me, that just sort of makes everything worth it, all the hard work that we've put in and the endless days and nights that we've spent working on ourselves and our body and our game and playing for your country. There's no bigger honour and better feeling than doing that. And, yeah, I guess that's what sort of we all work towards as footballers to try and be the best you can but also leave a legacy and, you know, just get the best out of your career and the best out of yourself. And yeah, that's definitely one of the biggest highlights. 20 million people mm -hmm. supporting you yeah. <laughs> must be great must be great feeling too yeah it is for sure um thank you so much for your time guys and all the best in your recovery and we can't wait to see you guys out on the pitch again thank you thank you so much for, having, for having us and hopefully no more injuries in the near future at least fingers yeah. crossed <laughs> yeah <laughs> feel free to drop into the kc youth information centers we are open 1 30 to 5 15 p.m monday to friday with extended hours exclusive to hampton park Please check out our website for more details. As always, all appropriate links will be attached to the show notes. To stay up to date with all the exciting things happening in KC Youth Services, please feel free to follow, like, and share us on our social media accounts at KC Youth Services.